Okay class and welcome to your second maths lesson of the week. Carrying on of course with fractions and decimals and you know the drill by now. Please pause the video now, go over to your arithmetic sheet and fill in the answers. Okay, welcome back. Thank you for uh, continuing to complete those. Now, let's have a quick uh, little do now. Let's find the errors here. So here, if you are working with someone, or if you're not, you can pause the video, have a read of these options, and tell me whether you think they are true or false. And if they are false, see if you can find the errors in them. Okay, well, let's have a look at that top question then. 4,320 rounding to the nearest thousand is 4,300. Well, well done if you were able to identify that the number hasn't been rounded to the nearest thousand. If I am rounding a number to the nearest thousand, how many zeros is it going to have at the end of it? It's going to have three. It's going to have a zero in the ones column. It's going to have a zero in the tens column. And it's going to have a zero in the hundreds column because it's a multiple of a thousand, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, something like that. So well done if you're able to identify that mistake. On to the second one, 325 round into the nearest 10 is 320. Now this time I'm round to the nearest 10 and I have got one zero at the end, so that bit was right, but well done if you were able to identify the mistake this person's made is instead of rounding up to 330, because the number is a five, and of course five or more, we let it soar, instead of doing that, they have rounded down to 320, so the answer to that one should have been 330. And the last one, 4,764 rounding to the nearest 100 is 4,700. Okay, so this is a multiple of 100 because it's got the two zeros at the end, so that's a good start. Now, I'm rounding to the nearest 100, so it's this number that's going to change. The number, oh, the number in my hundreds column. Now, to look to the right of it, it's a six, so I should have rounded up to the next 100. So the answer should have been 4,000. Again, as always, please pause here. If you are unsure of any of these words, it's a good time to discuss them or look them up. Okay, we are going to, in this lesson, be using our rounding knowledge to round decimal numbers. Now, this is a bit of a move on from what we've been doing with rounding. But fortunately, with rounding, the rules stay the same. So what we are going to do first is round to the nearest whole number. So let's have a look on our number line first. We are going to start by doing the number 3.4. Now, my number line is going to go from 3 to 4. 3.4 is going to look on this line somewhere. So, I have 10 equal segments here. So each of those segments is equal to a tenth because my whole number line is worth one. So each of my segments is worth a tenth, which I know is also 0 0.1. So I'm going to be counting up in 0 0.1, in 0 0.1, so I'm going to add on 0.1 each time. So I'll go 3, 3 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 4. So, what number was I rounding? Well, I was rounding the number 3.4, which is here. Is 3.4 nearer to 3? 
or is it nearer to four? Well done if you're able to identify that. It is, of course, nearer to three. Now, another way that we might be able to do that is with our usual method of rounding, where we look at our number, 3.4. What are we rounding to? Well, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. So the, near, the whole numbers are the numbers this side of the decimal point. So it's this that I'm looking to change. It's either going to stay as three, or it's going to go up to four. I have to look at the column to the right, and in that column is a four. So four or fewer, I must round down. So that number goes down to zero. Now I don't need to write 3.0, I can just write the answer as three. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. I hope that we can go through this second one together as well then. So the second one I'm looking for is the number 7.6. Well, I know that 7.6 is between 7 and 8. Where am I going to place 7.6 on this number line? Well, well done if you are able to identify that. I would place it there because I would count up 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 7.5, the halfway point. 7.6, 7.7, 7.8, 7.9, and 8. So is 7.6 closer to 7, or is it closer to 8? Well, well done if you are able to identify that it is much closer to 8. Again, another way I could do that is I could say, okay, so I've got 7 in my 1s column, 6 in my 10s column. So I'm rounding to the nearest whole number, so it's this number, which is going to change. It's going to go stay at 7 or go up to 8. So I have to have a look at the number in this column. It's 5 or more, so that means this number has to soar up and become 8. Two different ways of looking at the same problem. Let's have a go at the last one then. Tricky one last, as always. So I have the number 1.5. I know that number is between 1 and 2. It's somewhere on the number line there. Can you identify where? Well done if you are able to identify that it's here, right in the middle. So it is exactly halfway between there and there. So what am I going to do? Well, just like when I'm rounding numbers, for example, if I was rounding the number 15 to the nearest 10, I always round, if it's a 5 is the number I'm dealing with, I always round upwards, don't I? 5 or more, let it sort. So if I do have a number 1.5, for example, and I'm rounding to the nearest whole number, I always round up. Even though it's exactly halfway between, I always round up if it's a five. Okay, so uh, a quick question for you to try and work out here. What whole number is closest to 3.4? Well, well done if you are able to identify that 3.4 is between three and four. Just because I put, I now have hundredths marked onto my number line as well as tenths, doesn't change the math. So uh, my number 3.4 is between 3 and 4. Where would I place it on the number line? Well, it would go here. 3.4. And as you can see, it's much closer to 3. So I would round it down to 3. But now let's have a look at this one. What I've done this time is instead of my number line being equal to one, you can see my whole number line is just 0 0.1. That is all I am stepping from 3.2 to 3.3. It's just a step of 0 0.1 this time. So each of my intervals now is 100th or 
0.01. So, if each time I'm adding 0.01, where is my number 3.22 going to be? Well, well done if you were able to identify that it would be here. The reason for that is each time I'm adding up, I'm going to add a 1 into the hundredths column. So I've got 3.2, that's got no hundredths in it, 3 3.2, 1, 3.2, 2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 4, 3.2, 5, 3.2, 6, 3.2, 7, 3.2, 8, 3.2, 3.29, and of course I don't then want to go 3.210, once I'm adding another hundredth to there, I've got ten hundredths, which is a tenth, so I end up at 3.3. So I was rounding, this time I was rounding 3.22 to the nearest one decimal place. That means my answer is going to have one digit in the tens column. So is it nearer to 3.2 or is it nearer to 3.3? Right, as you can see from this number line, it's much closer to 3.2. The other way, of course, I could work that out is by saying, okay, well, I've got 3.22. I'm being asked to round to one decimal place. So I have to look at the number in the tens column. Look at the number next to it. It's five or more, we would let it soar, but it's not. So it is four or fewer, so it's going to go down. So I'll round it down to 3.2. Okay, so here's an opportunity for you to pause the video and have a go at rounding these numbers to one decimal place. The answers are going to be the answer, something point something. So like 7.8 or 6.3 or something like that, okay? So pause the video. Now have a go at these, please. Okay, welcome back. Let's have a look. So 4.56 is between these two numbers. 4.5, which has one decimal place, and 4.5. 6, which has one decimal place. So, where is it going to go on my number line? Well, counting from here, I go 4.5, 4.51, 4.52, etc., 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 all the way up to 4.56. So, well done if you were able to identify that rounded to one decimal place, 4.56 should be 4.6. As for the next one, 6.97 is between 6.9 and what number is going to go here? This was the tricky bit. The number that goes here is 7. It's not 6.910 or something like that. It's 6 point, or 6.10. It's 6.927, 6 uh, a distance of 0 0.1 between those two numbers. So where is 6.97 going to go? So if this is 6.9, this would be 6.91. 6.92, etc., all the way up to 6.97. 6.97, then you will be able to identify as much closer to 7 than it is to 6.9. Okay, on to your independent task, which for this lesson again has been arranged into three challenges. Please try and attempt all the challenges. Let me talk you through them now. Challenge one, all you are doing is identifying what the number is closest to. So have a read of the question for question one. Is 1.9 closer to one or two? So your answer in that box will either be one or two. Those ones are fairly straightforward. Challenge two, I'm rounding the number up to the nearest whole number. So my answer is going to be just a whole number. It's going to be like 6 or 12 or 14 or 106 
or something. It's not going to have any decimal places in it. I'm rounding the numbers to the nearest whole number. So for this one, you might it might help you to draw yourself a little number line just like this, like we were doing here, and put one whole number on the left-hand side, another one on the right-hand side, and work out where it goes in the middle. Uh, and then your answer will be, like I said, for each of these will be a whole number. And the last set of questions, challenge three, we'll round to one decimal place. So all of your answers will be something point something, like 6.8 or 1.9 or 2.4 or something like that. It will have one decimal place. It won't have two numbers after the decimal point. It won't have no numbers after the decimal point. It needs to have two number. It needs to have one number after the decimal point. It needs to have a digit in the tens column. Those are your three challenges for today. Of course, let us know if you need any help. And over to you.